Astronomers once saw black holes as rare and exotic in a universe seemingly dominated by stars and galaxies. A radically new view has emerged from surveys of galaxies and black holes stretching deep into the universe. Giant black holes lurk in the dust lanes and swirling gas clouds at the centers of nearly every large galaxy. What's more, the larger the galaxy, the larger the black hole. That's a clue that they must have evolved hand in hand, each shaping the life story of the other. To find out the role black holes played in the evolution of the universe, Astronomers are trying to recreate this shared history with what amounts to a whole new branch of science. They are using supercomputers to simulate the sweep of cosmic history, including that of galaxies like our own. This simulation takes us back to just a few hundred million years after the beginning of the universe gravity drew vast pockets of gas into dense centers. They grew hotter and hotter, igniting to become the first generation of stars. These stars lived hot and fast, and in only a few million years, some blew up in powerful supernovae. From these stars likely came the first generation of black holes. Cosmologist Tiziana Di Matteo is part of a wider effort to see what marked these early black holes left on the universe. Her computer program simulates the action of gravity on gas, the formation of stars, galaxies, and black holes. Her goal is to create a virtual universe that evolves like the real one did, with black holes and galaxies emerging and growing together. Our Milky Way galaxy is located in a quiet part of the universe, with relatively few other galaxies around it. Move out across the cosmic void, 50 million light years away, and you encounter the great Virgo cluster, filled with thousands of galaxies. Recent telescope surveys show that this region is part of a larger pattern of galaxies resembling a vast spider's web. To get her virtual universe to look like this, Tiziana needs to know what cosmic conditions gave rise to black holes and galaxies in the first place. So it's a beautiful problem because we start from extremely well-specified initial conditions. We know the initial condition of the universe, and that's very rare in astrophysics, in cosmology, in, uh, you know, in any branch of physics. Details of what the universe was like in its earliest times have come courtesy of a breakthrough observatory called WMAP. It found a blotchy pattern in a kind of radiation generated soon after the Big Bang. Astronomers believe this pattern is the origin of the spider's web structure they see in their telescopes. It defines the beginning point of Tiziana's simulation. On top of that, now we need to put the right physics in order to take these initial conditions, evolve them, and make the universe the way it looks like today. She sets her virtual universe in motion. It covers a region in the shape of a cube over a hundred million light years on a side. The result, an intricate cosmic web with gravity drawing matter into filaments and knots on the largest of scales. In places where filaments come together, galaxies and black holes first begin to appear. All the matter that is coming in from the large scale will also allow the black hole to, to grow um, 
because of these gases being transported from large scale all the way into the galaxy and the galaxy all the way into the center and therefore feeding and growing these central black holes at a very high rate. In this sequence drawn from her simulation, the circles indicate the appearance of black holes within the data. What she finds is that as these black holes gain mass, gravity pulls them toward the densest regions, where a few grow larger than all the rest. How did these chosen few black holes grow so rapidly? The orbiting Chandra X-ray Observatory recently turned up evidence at the centers of galaxies back in the time of the early universe. These images show its remarkable find, actual supermassive black hole pairs, beginning what astronomers believe is a dance of death. In most cases, their forward momentum simply causes them to go into orbit around each other, like a planet around a sun. This orbit can go on for billions of years, to grow large, one black hole must draw the other in, close enough to swallow it. Albert Einstein showed how they do it. He predicted that when massive bodies accelerate or whip around each other, they can stir up the normally smooth fabric of space-time. It's like a rock hitting a pond some of the energy of the impact is transferred to waves that move outward along the surface. Likewise, a titanic collision of black holes would send waves, gravity waves, racing across the universe. So you have two tornadoes embedded in a third larger tornado, and they're going to come crashing together, and you want to know what happens when these tornadoes are not made from whirling air, but made from whirling warped space and time. This simulation shows what happens. As two black holes get close, they turn space into a turbulent sea of gravity waves. These waves have the effect of carrying energy away from the orbit itself. That allows the pair to draw each other in and merge into one. We go back to half of the age of the universe and all of these black holes are swallowing large amounts of gas. So it's a fun time, it's sort of the golden age for the growth of most black holes. The reason why this is because most of the large major mergers are occurring in the universe around this time. 